What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rex Engine. Hope everyone is doing amazingly well today. In this video, we're going to talk about making the Bazooka Rex Boss AI. So this is a video I've been excited to do for a while, um, and it's actually going to be broken up into a few separate parts because this guy has a ton of different actions that he carries out. So in this first video, we're going to talk about his introductory sequence. So right when the player walks into the arena, he's going to do this little roar, and there's some other cool stuff that happens. He's got like a little animation. And we're going to set up all of that to have it segue into the first portion of his AI for the battle, which will be the next video. So let's take a look at this guy and let's see what happens when the player walks in. So there's a few cool things of note here. Um, the first thing we're going to notice is, although you guys can't tell right now, um, the keyboard control for the player is disabled when they walk in. So that means they can't damage the boss, they can't move around or interrupt the sequence in any way. So there's an action for that that I'm going to show you guys how to set that up, and I'm going to show you guys, of course, how to make the player's keyboard controls regain themselves as soon as the sequence is over. Another thing you should notice if you watch the guy's energy bar right now is that it starts at zero and fills itself up automatically, kind of like how a Mega Man boss does. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that as well. And I'm going to show you guys how to play his roar animation and sound effects. So I've got this, I've got two versions of the boss here. I have an old version, which is sort of a template that I'm going to be following along with. And we've got the new version down here as well, which right now is a blank slate. And I'm going to build it up in front of you guys to show you how everything fits together. So let me disable the old version. I will re-enable the new version. I'll hit play right now just to show you guys the new version has nothing hooked up yet. And let's bring this guy to life. So the first thing is I've got this guy with an AI routine. Um, if you guys have followed along with the other videos, which you should have seen by this point, you can add AI to an enemy by going to Tools, Rex Engine, Add AI. And that's going to give us an AI routine. Um, this guy has four separate ones. He's got one for the intro, he's got two separate phases, and then he's got his death routine. Um, so for right now, we're focusing on the intro, and there's no movements and there's no events in the intro. The entire intro takes place within this intro sequence. So to create that, if that wasn't there already, you could just hit the Add Sequence button, and that'll make a new sequence for you. And that's where we are right now with this intro sequence. So let me reference uh, the old template here. OK, so the very first action we want is a toggle invincibility action. And what this is going to do is toggle invincibility for the boss to make sure that the boss cannot take damage while the intro sequence is happening. Otherwise, you could get into weird situations where maybe the player is killing the boss before the intro sequence is finished, and we don't want that. So just to keep everything nice and clean, I'm going to go to the first action here, which right now by default is a wait action. I'm going to click Edit Action, Change Action Type, and go to Toggle Invincibility. And under Toggle Type, we have Enable, Disable, and Toggle. Enable means it's going to make the boss invincible. Disable would mean it's going to take away his invincibility. And toggle would flip it back and forth no matter what the setting was. So I'm going to set that to enable, just to make sure the boss is always invincible here. The next action is really straightforward. We're just going to wait for 0 0.1 seconds. Um, at this point, this is all just for show. It's just to make it, just to make it so the timing feels good. So I'm going to click on add action wait, and I'm going to type in 0 0.1 seconds into the box. The third action is going to be a system action, and this is going to be the one that takes away the player's control. So I'll click on add action. Um, I think the bottom of the screen is getting a little bit cut off here, but I've got this, this full menu, which you guys should have as well, and the very bottom option here is system. So there's a few different things under system. There's a lot of cool stuff we can do. You can, you can enable or disable a game object. You can enable or disable player control. You can shake the screen, or you can load a new level. So what we're going to do here is click on enable player control, 
and then under enable type, click the disable box. So now the player's controls will be disabled as soon as they walk into the room. And so just to verify that, let me show you guys really quick. I am trying to move around right now. You can probably hear me hitting the keys, I'm trying to jump, trying to move left and right. Nothing works. So my controls have been successfully disabled. Okay, so here's where it's going to get fun. Um, so for the fourth action, just to give this guy a little bit of presence, like a little bit of oomph, I'm going to give this guy a system action, and we're going to shake the screen. And this is going to tie in where he does his roar animation, which we'll implement in a second. So he's going to roar, and the screen's going to shake, and it's going to play a sound effect, and we're going to make sure this guy looks like a big, kind of badass boss. So the next action is going to be an energy action. And this is where we're going to fill the boss's energy bar from zero, just to give it that kind of cool, like, Mega Man-esque intro sequence effect, right, where you know the boss battle is about to go down. So I'm going to click on Add Action. And again, this is getting cut off, I'm sorry about that, but the bottom option there is Set Energy. So I'll click on that. That's going to give us an energy action. Under energy type, we can choose hit points or magic points. Um, obviously, we're doing hit points now. And under value type, there's a lot of stuff we can do here. We can add. This is if you want to add health to the enemy. Subtract. Set it to amount if you want to set it to a specific amount. Set to max. Set to zero. Or animate bar fill. And that's what we want. We want to animate the bar fill. You can give that a duration. Um, I think here we have a three second duration just to make sure it lasts long enough so the player really gets a chance to look at it. And target type, you can do either himself or the player or another actor, which will let you specify another actor either by slotting it in or giving it a name um, or by slotting in a transform. Uh, but in this case, we just want it to happen to himself, to the boss. So I'll click on self. And here we're getting into the Roar. So we want the boss to play an animation. Um, so let me see, if I click on Roar, so I've got his animation ready to be slotted here. So I'm going to go to Add Action, Play Animation. So under Play Type, we could either stop or play an animation. Obviously, we want to start, we want to play the animation here. Um, I'm going to slot in this Roar clip into the slot. Under loop type, you can have the animation either play once, or you can have it loop indefinitely. And if you have it loop indefinitely, it'll keep going until you manually stop it with another action. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, target type, just as before, you can choose if this is happening to the enemy itself or to another character. So we'll click on self. And under that, we want to play a sound effect for the roar. Um, so I'm going to click on... Man, I, I'm sorry, I hate that this is all getting cut off by the screen right now. Um, it's just the recording software I'm using is cutting off the very bottom. Um, but so we've got an audio action here. So I'm going to click on Play Sound Effect. Uh, you can also play music, pause music, change music track, set the volume of the music, or set whether or not the music is looping. So all of these things are other options that I hope are pretty self-explanatory that you can use in other ways for your games. So for the time being, we're going to do play sound effect. And let me see where that sound effect is. There we go. And so we'll slot in this roar sound effect. So if we look at this guy now, we should see him playing the roar animation, shaking the screen, and playing the sound effect. So we've kind of got a cool little intro happening. And of course, we're not stopping the animation, so it's going to happen indefinitely. And we're also not giving the player back their control yet. Okay, so while all of this is happening, we're just going to have this wait for three more seconds just to give everything time to finish. So I'll add a wait action and give that three seconds. Okay, now we're wrapping it up here. Now 
Now we're going to toggle invincibility. So I'll go back, toggle invincibility action. At this point, I'm going to hit disable. And what that's going to do is disable the invincibility. So now the boss can be damaged again. I'll do a play animation action. And now we're going to, under play type rather than play, I'm going to hit stop current. And that will stop the roaring animation he's doing. I'm going to set the music to play the boss music. So I'll add an audio action at the very bottom there. I'll hit play music. Um, oh, hold on, hold on. Change music track, sorry. Play music will, if the music was paused, it'll, it'll resume the music. So whatever music was playing before will resume. Change music track will actually let us play a brand new song from the beginning. So I'm going to slot in, um, I have, for the demo, I have this boss theme. So I'm going to slot that in so the boss music should start. And there's only a couple more here. Um, we're going to enable the player's control. So I'll go back down here. The very bottom, getting cut off again, um, there is system action. And under action type, enable player control. And so before we had it disable the player's controls, and now we're going to enable them again so the player can move again. And the final action I'm actually not going to implement right now, because that'll be for the next video. And what that action is, is it's, an, it's a change AI routine action, which will make the boss start doing its phase one enemy AI. Um, and so we won't do that now because it doesn't exist yet, but for the next video, we'll set that up. So let me look at this real quick and we'll make sure everything looks good. Um, let me go into the settings really quick and unmute the music so we can hear that hit save. And so now we should have a completed boss intro. And I can move again. And of course the boss can't move yet because we haven't set up this enemy AI. Um, but we can kill it. Not very nice. And so there you have it. That was setting up the boss's introductory AI. Um, so we're going to have a similar sequence when he dies, where we've got a whole cool particle effect shower and death animation, and like his roars are going crazy. Um, and in between, we're going to have two separate videos covering his phase one AI, and then once his health gets below 50%, he changes to a second phase where he's more dangerous and he's got a super attack. Um, so I'm hoping you guys are looking forward to those. Um, they should be probably a little bit longer than this one, a little bit more complicated. But I hope that video helped you guys, and I will talk to you next time.